One of the most important things to know about Putney Bridge Station on the district line is that it's not actually in Putney. It's on the other side of the river, in Fulham. Now, it's not unknown for railways to misrepresent the location of their stations in order to make their lines more attractive to passengers, but the district line already has a station in Putney, East Putney. So why would they lie like this? Well, in fact, when it was built, East Putney wasn't an underground station at all. It, along with the entire line to Wimbledon, was built by the London and South Western Railway. This was a mainline company which ran all the lines out of Waterloo. In fact, this track here still connects with National Rail between Putney and Wandsworth Town. If you compare East Putney and Putney Bridge stations, the architecture is totally different. Putney Bridge was built by the Metropolitan District Railway, predecessor of the district line, and opened in March 1880. The district were in a bit of a hurry because they wanted to get the boat race crowds. In those days, the station was known by the slightly more accurate name of Putney Bridge and Fulham. You might notice something interesting about the building. In 1880, this was the terminus of the district railway, but the building faces sideways. It seems that they always intended to extend. You could go further. The district railway offered something unusual for an underground railway, boat services. They built a pier which was more or less next to the railway bridge, and cut a deal with the Thames Steamboat Company. You could, if you were so inclined, get a boat from here to Kew, Richmond, Teddington or Hampton Court. The district struck another deal, this time with the London and South Western Railway. This was very much the way the district operated. They didn't have a lot of money, but they were very good at negotiating. Their chairman, James Stats Forbes, was all about diplomacy. In 1889, the London and South Western opened a branch from Wimbledon to East Putney. The district had negotiated to allow their own trains to run into Wimbledon, and in exchange, the London and South Western could run trains along the district's line to Kensington. To sweeten the deal, the district agreed to abandon their plans to build a line to Barnes. In the end, the London and South Western didn't run any trains to Kensington, and the district got a lovely new bridge out of it. The bridge opened in 1889 and was built by the London and South Western. This is not actually Putney Bridge, that's the road bridge there. This bridge is the Fulham Railway Bridge. It can be crossed on foot if you're feeling energetic but can't be bothered to walk to Putney Bridge. On the 1st of September 1902, the station got renamed to Putney Bridge and Hurlingham, which was even less accurate because Hurlingham isn't actually a place. Well, I suppose it is a park. In 1932, the station was renamed again to just Putney Bridge. I should probably mention this disused platform here. This siding was originally built when this was the end of the district line. It was built so that some trains could terminate here and others could sneak around them and head off over the bridge. The station also has this rather unusual feature, a pillbox. This was built during the Second World War to protect the bridge. It doesn't do much for aesthetics, but it's an interesting piece of history. And, of course, I almost forgot to mention this delightful old platform sign. Over the course of the 20th century, the London and South Western Railway got taken over by the Southern Railway, which got taken over by British Railways, which became British Rail, which was privatised in 1994. By this time, no non-underground trains had served the line for over 50 years. As part of a general clear-out of lines that really ought to be the underground, British Rail sold the branch to London Transport for a pound, which is astonishing when you look at how much an Oyster season ticket costs these days. This made Fulham Railway Bridge the London Underground's only bridge across the Thames. Now, I know someone in the comments is already typing, so Kew Bridge doesn't count then, to which I say, no, that's still owned by Network Rail, smart guy. The bridge was refurbished in the mid-90s, and apparently this delightful pale green shade was chosen by polling local residents. So that's the complicated story of Putney Bridge. It's not in Putney, the bridge next to it isn't Putney Bridge, and the line on the other side isn't even a tube line. All very frustrating, unless you make videos about the underground and you're looking for subjects. 
Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this inaccurately named tale from the tube. If you did, then please do hit like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. And feel free to share with your friends, family, church congregation, rehab support group or whoever. And I'll see you again very soon for another tale from the tube.